Okay, okay guys, we are looking at the principal parts of regular verbs page. This page is from today, which is Monday, um, December the 7th. So if you are watching this, um, this will help you figure out what the principal parts of regular verbs are. Um, if you haven't, you should have already watched the um, video that I had already posted. And if you have watched that already and taken your notes like I had um, posted online, then you should already kind of be a step ahead of the game. This worksheet should be pretty easy for you if you haven't already completed it. So the first thing I like to do, remember we need a highlighter or something to um, underline with. Um, I like to read up at the top um, in that top box because this is where like all of our information that we need to know and like about principal parts of regular verbs is going to be. So it says a verb's tenses are made from four basic forms. So now, last week we learned about um, past, present, and future. This week we're talking about the four different forms of those. These forms are called the principal parts. So our four forms are present, present participle, past, and past participle. Um, and this is kind of where we learn what goes with what thing. Um, so... What we are looking at now is under each of these forms. It has the two different, it's got two different words that's given examples for each form. Um, so when it's in the past or in the present part or present form, it's just happening. It's telling us that it's happening now. So out next to it or above it, I'm going to write now because that's when it's happening. Um, and then again, present participle is still happening now. We're just going to add something else to it. In the past, happened yesterday or before. And again, the past participle is the same thing. We're just adding something else to it. Um, so if we look at the word stop, if something, if you're telling somebody to stop in the present, then it's just going to be stop. And if you're asking somebody something in the present, you're just it would just be ask. Now, if it would be present participle, you have to have, for it to be a participle, you have to have these three words that go with it for the present form. So it has to have either the word am, is, or are, if it's in the present. Um, and then it also has to have the ending ing. So there's two things that you need to look for in, um, when you're looking at present participle. First, you need to look for the word am, is, or are. And then you need to look at the verb and see if it has that ing ending. If it doesn't, then you need to go back and make sure um, that you're looking at a present participle because it could just be the present tense that you're looking at. Um, same thing for past. If it's in the past, um, it means that it's happened before. And we know that in the past tense, it has the ending ed. So... Um, in our past participle, again, we have three words that we need to look for that comes before the verb, um, which is our helping verb. These helping verbs for past participle is either going to be has, have, or had. So when you're looking at the past participle, you have to have the word either has, have, or had that comes right before the verb. And it also has to have that ending in ed. So um, a regular verb form forms its past and pa past participle by adding ed or d to the present form. So that's important. Um, and then now we're looking down here at these bullets. It says the present and the past forms can be used by themselves. So if it's just in the present or it's just in the past, you're just looking at the verb. Um, the present participle and the past participle are always used with a helping verb. That's really, really important. Again, pre your helping verb that goes with a present participle, it's either going to be am, is, or are. Your helping verb that goes with the past participle is going to be has, have, or had. So um, to form present perfect tense by using have with a past participle, have asked. Um, this is present perfect and past perfect. Um, 
for it to be basically for it to be present perfect, it's got to have the word have right before it. And for it to be past perfect, it's got to have had right before it. Um, so perfect tense is different than the participles. Um, but we will cover that in a minute. So we are looking at number one. I'm putting my um, highlighter down for now. And now I'm picking up a pen. Hopefully you have a pencil just in case you make a mistake. You can um, erase. I'm going to use a pen because it shows up better. We are looking at number one. It says, well, our directions, it's the first thing we do is it says write present, present participle, past or past participle to identify the part of, the principal part of a regular, of the underlined verb. So it wants us to look at these underlined verbs and figure out if it's going to be in the present, the present participle, the past or the past participle. Um, so, number one, it says, genius sometimes slows productivity. Well, we are looking at the word slows, and we need to ask ourselves, is it happening now, or is it happening in the past? Well, it sounds like it's happening in the, uh, it's happening now. So, if it's happening now, and it does not have a helping verb with it, then it's just going to be present. Um, number two, Leonardo da Vinci processed great genius. Well, again, Leonardo da Vinci was somebody that happened or somebody that was in the past. But if we also look at our verb, it has the ending ED, but there is no helping verb with it. So we know that this one is going to be in the past by itself. Um, number three, Yolanda borrowed a biography of Leonardo. Again, borrowed it ends in that ed therefore it's happening in the past number four um it describes his many unfinished projects describes ends in an s um which means it's going to be happening now therefore it is happening in the present excuse me um, Leonardo invented many machines on number five. Invented ends in an ED. Therefore, it is your happening in the past. Um, number six, only the drawings have survived. Now, here's where we get um, into the participles. So, have survived. If we look up here at the top, under participle, present participle, it says we use the helping verb am, is, or are. So we know it's not present participle. So if we look in a past participle, it says um, we have to have the well, help. One of the helping verbs has, have, or had, and an ed. So if we look back down here, we have the word have, and we also have an ed. Therefore, we know it is a past participle. Um, but this is also going to be one of those from the bullets that we, um, had up above these last two bullets. It has the helping verb have. And if we look back up here, it says to form a present perfect tense by using have with a past participle, have asked. If we look here, have survived. It's got the word have, and it's also got the ED. So this is also going to be present perfect. Okay. Number seven, his inventions are functioning perfectly well today. R is our helping verb and it's got that ing. So if we look back up here, am, is, are, or have, has, had, well, our helping verb was R. So it's going to be um, in our present participle. Okay, number eight, it says a few of his magnificent paintings have lasted. So if we look at what our, what's underlined, we have that helping verb of have, and our regular verb has the ending ed in it. So if we come back up here, 
Am is are is for present. Well, we didn't use any of those, but if we look over here, we have has, have, had uh, for past. So we know this is past participle. And again, if we used um, have and a past participle, then it's going to be present perfect. So I'm going to write that out here. Present perfect. Okay. The Mona Lisa is attracting more crowds now than ever. So again, our underline um, portion is, is our helping verb. And we know that is goes with present because if it is happening, then it's happening right now. And it's also got that ing ending. Therefore, this is going to be present participle. Okay, so we are going to continue and we're going to look down here at the bottom. Again, our directions say underline the verb in each sentence, write present, present perfect, past or past perfect to identify the tense of the verb. So now it hasn't given us the verb. It wants us to go through and find the verb ourselves. So number 10, it says Leonardo used his left hand to write and draw. Well, we know our... Um, who our sentence is about is Leonardo. Well, what is Leonardo doing? He used. So used is our verb. And if it's just one word, then we are going to either be between present or past. And we know that ED or D, if it ends in ED or D, then it's going to happen in the past. So again, this is just one word by itself. Leonardo used used as our verb, therefore it's in past. Number 11 says biographers have suggested the significance of this. Again, who are we talking about this in this sentence? We're talking about biographers. Well, what are they doing or what have they done? They have suggested. And remember, we have a helping verb, which is the word have. And our, if we look back up here at the top, am, is, are, is for present. Well, we know that it's not present because our helping verb was have. So we look over here at past, past participle, I mean. Um, and it says we have to have has, have, or had. Well, this wants to know about present perfect. So let's look at our two bullets. The biographers have suggested the significance of this. Well, have plus a past participle is going to be present perfect. So number 11 is present perfect, or it's going to be, if we looked up here, past participle. Sorry, okay. Um, number 12, print something with your left hand. Print something with your left hand. Well, what is it telling us to do? It's telling us to print. And when is it telling us to do it? It doesn't have an E or, or an ED, ED or D ending. It's just got print. So it's telling us to do it now, which if it's just one word and it's telling us to do it now, then it's happening in the present. And then number 13, last one. Drawing with his left hand had forced a different perspective on things. Well, um, what is um, our sentence about? It's talking about drawing with his left hand. And what did drawing with his left hand do? It had forced, which is our verb phrase. Had is going to be our helping verb. And if we look up at the top, Again, this wants to know about our past perfect or present perfect. So if we look up at the top and our bullet, we've already used have for present perfect. Now we have the word had. Um, and with had and a past participle, it says it's going to be past perfect. So this one is past perfect or it is just a past participle.
So either one of those would be correct. Now, I hope this helped. I hope you study this page for your test on Friday. If you have any other questions, please feel free to message me um, on Schoology or email me or have your parents call me and I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.